What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on this Friday night, December 30th, 2022. It's about 8.08 p.m. here along the coast here of California, West Coast. And the latest quake shows a 1.9 on the globe up into Alaska. Looks like up around the Denali area. All right, let's go ahead and check out latest activity here across the map on the USGS side. Start up here in the Pacific Northwest. As uh, far as newer activity goes since this morning, we really haven't seen anything pop up here. Uh, there has been a little bit of tremor to this re uh, within this vicinity uh, to the north in the Vancouver Island ranges. This is the uh, Cascadia tremor tonight. 58 epicenters and also a little bit down here in Northern California at the very southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. A little bit of tremor uh, for the Northern California region. Uh, one earthquake out here. Uh, this one coming in near the New Pine Creek, Oregon area, a 2.5 at 2.8 kilometers deep uh, north of Goose Lake. Now, I believe this area did see an earthquake or two over the last week in this region. Okay, it looks like there was a 1.4 here a couple days ago within that same vicinity of the Goose Lake area. All right, uh, the rest of Northern California down here looks pretty spotty until you get to the Cobb Mountain region, the Bay Area, central portions of California, all fairly quiet. Not a whole lot of uptick in Southern California. There is a little swarming uh, around the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault in and around it. Uh, not a large swarm, but uh, looks like some ones and some smaller quakes there uh, in that little sequence of earthquakes, nothing big. Just keeping an eye on it, uh, any kind of swarming on a major plate boundary could be an indicator of some, uh, well, some future quake activity on the large size. Uh, 2.3, that one coming in earlier this morning, just about 2, uh, yeah, 3.23 a.m. near the Worm River, Idaho area. Now let's go ahead and check out the latest Yellowstone overview. And doesn't look like there's too much activity popping up here at Yellowstone currently. Uh, there's the 2.3 that was showing up uh, in the southern region here. Uh, looks like that showed up uh, even up here to the north. But as uh, far as earthquake activity goes, a little bit this morning. And it looks like maybe a couple small spikes here over the uh, afternoon time period. All right. Uh, and yeah, the rest of the country, absolutely quiet. There's really nothing showing up across the board. Um, on the Earthquake 3D globe now, oh, let's see, I believe there was an earthquake over here around the Baja California region, but looks like they may have taken it down, um, may have been a false reading, but as uh, far as the EMSC reporting other earthquakes here around the U.S., things are quiet and they're not reporting anything either in the uh, states. All right, uh, Mexico over here, 4.7 coming in. That one from this morning time period. Uh, Puerto Rico area looking a little on the spotty side right now. Not a whole lot popping. There's a 5.0 coming in within the last hour in the Chile region. About 97 kilometers deep into the Peru Chile Trench. Now this area definitely has been seeing a pretty large uptick in earthquake activity uh, in the microquake range and uh, up to some fives or so. Another 3.3 coming into the region of the Peru Chile Trench. It's a lot of activity kicking up there, so that might be one area to watch pretty closely. Uh, also, New Zealand been um, having some threes and some fours. A little earthquake party down there uh, around the North Island region. Let's see what we got. Nothing showing up here on the USGS map, of course. So we will venture to the GeoNet servers and see what is being reported here. 3.1, 2.9, 3.8. All these within the last couple hours, there is a 4.3 as well. So definitely an uptick here. I would say over the last two hours, now the all magnitudes map here will show some of these smaller microquakes. And it looks like there's a, a definitely a bunch of them kicking up here uh, in the area around North Island, New Zealand. A uh, quick look at the volcanic drums will probably show some of that activity. And indeed it does. Uh, it looks as though the area that's seen it the strongest as far as the most uh, closest station to the epicenter of these little quakes appear to be this region right here. Um, now those earthquakes that we are seeing are kind of spread out uh, all over the place. No distinct area, just uh, 
looks like um where is this at 10 miles west of taupo super volcano that's that 3.1 coming in uh let me see here now some of these earthquakes are from um i believe they're a little bit on the older side let's see Let me back out of here just a little bit 3.1 2.9 yeah it looks like that 3.1 though is pretty close to the uh, taupo super volcano uh, but these other quakes 3.8 uh, a little bit further south but no major i'm not seeing any swarming or anything going on at the volcanoes just picking up on some of that uh, earthquake activity today around the uh, region all right, uh, let's go back to the map here. And far as 4.0 and above, there's not a whole lot. Uh, looks like there was. Uh, we did have a 4.9 near the Santa Cruz Islands area, around the Solomon Islands. That one coming in pretty deep at 138 kilometers. These two earthquakes over here around the Tonga Trench are from this morning time period, with a 5.4 and a 4.8. Now, I believe with this deeper earthquake movement here, uh, I still still need to watch this back building along the trench areas uh, for some larger movement. Also, adjustment could be taking place up here around Solomon Islands. That is in our uh, kind of our quiet zone. We chatted about that last night, uh, and that's still the same. I mean, we got a 4.9 coming in, but that's still uh, a little on the uh, quiet side for the region. Around the Java Trench, seen a 4.4, a little cluster of swarms up of earthquakes, and that little swarm. The majority of those, these quakes are from yesterday, though, including the fives, and the uh, basically the only two ones from today is a 5.0 way east here around the Banda Sea, and then this 4.4 within that swarming region. So, still seeing a, uh, a little bit of possibility of some further large-scale movement in that region. Uh, also up here off the coast of Japan, a 4.5 coming in, 32 kilometers deep, just outside the East China Sea. One earthquake up here on the northern section of the Kuril Kamchaka Trench, 4.7 coming in this afternoon time period. Alaska and Lucian Trench, all pretty quiet for now. Um, just very typical movement up there around the Alaska area. And there is a little bit of activity down here along the uh, Antarctica region, well south of South Africa. We're talking a couple thousand miles maybe. <laughs> Um, 5.0 and a 5.1 coming in along this area near the, oh, what is that? The Andrew Bain fracture zone. A couple different fracture zones down here. Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet. Uh, not a whole lot going on. One earthquake there at the tip. Bottom tip there of Greenland. 4.6 coming in. That one from last night. Alrighty, righty, let's see what else we have out here. Uh, we checked Yellowstone Trimmer tonight. We're going to check out, see if any volcanoes there into the Pacific Northwest are active. Check out Mount St. Helens around the area here today. See what we have to report. It's been a couple days since I reported here on the uh, volcanoes. There, definitely a little bit of activity. You guys see that? Some spikes there in the background noise. The previous date... UTC date still shows some very small microquakes. Now these are super duper small. Um, yeah, nothing big though. No, no major movement kicking off there at Mount St. Helens, which of course is good news. Uh, around the Big Island, most of the activity, the swarming confined to the Pahala area. No uh, major changes noted there at either of the volcanoes. They are currently resting. And uh, who knows, gearing up for maybe the next eruption. All right, uh, space weather activity. Still watching a whole bunch of sunspots here on the sun. Quite a few of them. 3180, though, is going to be the, um, the sunspot to watch. Also, 3176 here. Got a little bit more complex today. I don't believe this is even a, a latest image. This is from a couple days ago. That's old. Um, this one here doesn't even look like it's uh, the most recent. 1230. It's a little old, but uh, let me go over here and check out the SDO site. 
see what they have for the uh, direct images here and this this one's got the old one on here as well what's going on that's kind of a little on the odd side so well we just got to go with this image i suppose but uh, yeah 3176 is a little bit more centered over here to the east uh, directly facing earth it did pop off a couple m flares earlier today uh, here is a look at these solar flares uh, kicking up there's one good one right there now I'm pretty certain that it did pop off too. There's another one here, reaching into the M flare category, and uh, that's that's a pretty complex system. Uh, there is, and I'd like to have the newest image, but uh, looking at it, definitely some possibility of some further flaring. 3180 behind the bin um, looks to be a pretty uh, fairly large sunspot, and uh, definitely complex enough to produce some more flares in the coming days. So we'll watch that pretty closely. Right now, 99% certainty of a C flare, M flare around 50% chance, 10% for the X flare category. That is the strongest flare. Um, yeah, and 31, let's see here. Here's some of the, the uh, notable flares in the past 48 hours, M2 and above. Now, these are all the sunspots, and there's a lot of them. But uh, we'll keep an eye on these two main ones up here. Going to be 3176 and 3180 as they uh, continue to evolve. Coronal Hole. Now this image is, I, I don't believe this is the most recent Im I mean, it's, I don't know. Some of this data is out of whack here. This one's really old from a couple days ago. So it, it looks like it's coming off directly from the SDO site. Nothing really uh, I can do about that. Um... No major expected um, space weather events coming up. Looks like unsettled conditions here uh, over the next couple nights. We are looking at uh, the amplification of the aurora up at the higher latitudes. Um, nothing big, but uh, you might be able to catch a glimpse of the auroras up there uh, in the portions of Canada, the Iceland, Greenland region. All right, uh, let's see what else is there. A quick glance here at the weather. Weather systems out here along the West Coast uh, kind of skipped us here in the valley. Now, check this out here. If you guys can see that, where this, uh, let's see if I can bring this up. Well, that's kind of, <laughs> not that, not the low pressure system, but this area right here around the Sacramento Valley, that's called a rain shadow. Now, the system that's coming in is coming from straight from the west to the east that zonal flow it's fairly warm actually got up to into the low 60s today which is good news for rain uh, the warmer the systems the better but the mountains here to the west squeeze out the moisture it skips us here in the sacramento valley for the most part and then it reforms over the sierra nevada here uh, over to the higher terrain and i despise that <laughs> rain shadow so i we need a little bit more flow pattern from from the southwest here uh, and that bringing that moisture up like that would definitely be beneficial for the sacramento valley but either way hey we're getting a lot of rainfall into the mountains and snowfall at the higher elevation and that's uh kind of where it counts right now but uh looking over the night tonight here got a pretty good brunt of moisture coming in now i'm not for certain if this is going to hit us or not it's kind of down towards the sacramento valley uh, up here in Chico, we could get a little, just a glancing blow with some of the heavier precipitation. We'll watch that. I just wish it was centered a little bit further uh, north, but that's okay. And then uh, after that, you can see the uh, future cast here. A little break on the day towards Sunday, but then Monday we got more systems coming in and more after that. So rain is definitely on the horizon and in the forecast for the uh, foreseeable future here along the west coast and that is some good news for uh california all right uh let's see here i think that's about it folks um friday night uh big weekend coming up right got new year's i think i'm gonna stay i'm gonna stay inside on that night i'm not one to go out and party or uh, i might watch the uh the ball drop on tv but that's about it i mean midnight staying up to midnight uh here along the west coast i don't know i just i try to be in bed around 10 or 11 
earlier if I can, but uh, yeah, stay safe out there this weekend, folks. A lot of stuff going on, and uh, I'm sure a lot of partying. Just got to be safe about it, and uh, we'll be back here tomorrow sometime. Till then, enjoy the Friday night at hand, and we'll catch you guys tomorrow sometime. Peace out.